Please join me in the call to worship. We gather in the presence of God. We gather in the house of God. We gather to be the people of God. Friends, let us worship the God who is ever present. Friends, as we light our peace lamp once again this week, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Good and gracious God, we are thankful for today and we are thankful that we can gather here as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we continue, God, in our pursuit of peace. We have seen Um, our physical world not at peace with with Hurricane Dorian the way it has devastated the Bahamas and the coastline and as it goes up into Canada. God, we pray your blessing upon all those affected by the storm. There are so many storms in our lives, God, storms that cause us angst that is the opposite of peace. So God, we do pray for peace for the natural order of the world. We pray for peace within ourselves and our communities and our families and in our country and in our world. And once again, God, we lift up our brothers and sisters, neighbors and friends from the 10th Mountain Division who are in pursuit of peace. We think of Dustin and Jack and Alex who are deployed to places known to you. And we are thankful for all who are in pursuit of peace. May there come a day, God, when your peace will reign supreme. In the meantime, continue to help us to pursue and seek peace within all the relationships we have. And we do give you thanks and praise in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. So friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's offer one another signs of peace. Good morning, sweet girl.
Let us join in the opening prayer. Holy Spirit, guide our worship, guide our words, our songs, our postures, our thoughts, and our prayers. Let everything that is of God fill this place, and anything that is of diminish. Remove our pride, our agendas, and our added attentions, so that only you and your purposes remain. We want to experience God and to hear God speak to us. Thank you for leading us today. Amen. Y'all may be seated, and children of any age, come on up and join me for a few minutes. Over here. Come on. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So who's, who's went to school this week? You two. You're in third grade. What grade are you in? First grade. Did you guys have fun? What'd you do? Math. So you had to use your brain, right? And you had to, you read books, so you had to use your eyes and your ears. So how did, how does your brain work? Sometimes you have to think, how does that thinking process work? Does anybody know? I haven't learned it either, and I'm one or two years older than you. You all have hands, right? Have you ever looked at your hands? Did you ever look at your hands? You had a palm reading. Well, I wasn't thinking about a palm reading this morning. Okay. Well, let's look at our hands. What do your hands, what can they do? Okay. What else can your hands do? They can move. What can your hands do, do you think? Can you catch a ball with your hands? Can you throw a ball with your hands? Yeah. You can draw. You can play with Play-Doh. You can give your mommy a hug with your hands, right? You can crush things with your hands. Hands are a wonderful thing. Do you know how they were made? How do, you know, how do, how do my fingers, you know, how do my fingers work in my thumb? My thumb works independently from this finger, and yet I can put them together at the same time. Really? Now how does that how does that bone know to bend? Ah, but then we have to go back to the brain and how does the brain tell it? The brain tells it with mind waves. With mind waves. And how do those mind waves get around? All of this to me is a mystery. Because we can figure out some things. But some things are just a mystery. You know, there's a passage in scripture that tells us that we are wonderfully made. God knits all of this together, figures it all out. I don't have to worry about how it all connects. But God has made all of this and made all of us so that our feet, you know, my ankle moves so I can bend like that, and my knees bend, and I can walk, and my hands work, and my eyes see, and my, hear, my ears hear. God made us wonderfully. We are precious in God's sight. And that's something we're going to talk about in the scripture today, that God made us and knows us and loves us and has made this wonderful creation. So I hope you listen a little bit today because it's all about how we are wonderfully made and we are so valued by God. Every one of us is of, of value to God. Does that make sense to you guys? You are loved by God. You are loved by your moms and dads and your grandmas and your aunts and uncles, but you are loved by God. That makes sense out there? Yeah. You still have to listen to the sermon though, okay? <laughs> all right, let's pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for making us wonderfully made. Thank you for all the parts that you have put together. 
and they work so well. So God, help us to remember how, how cherished and valued that we are as young people, as older people, as all people, that no matter who we are, we have all been created by you, and you love each and every one of us. So God, we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys can go back. I believe Dev Van Houten has a mission moment for us this morning. I do. Mission is back. I hope you missed us, but we are... <laughs> But uh, we appreciate your patience as we regroup and get going again. Uh, the Mission Minute today is a hodgepodge of announcements. First of all, we uh, are in the final stages of organizing the Crop Walk. Many of you have participated before. It is a little late in getting organized this year, but it is tentatively scheduled for October 20th. So if you're interested in walking, as soon as I know that it's final and I have pledge sheets, I will get a hold of you and then we can get going. Um, the second thing that's on our mind, which is probably on a lot of people's minds, is the devastation in the Bahamas. UMCOR is um, collecting money for collecting monetary donations. That's what we're doing right now. Um, there's several ways that you can do it. We do recommend uh, donating with UMCOR. UMCOR stands for United Methodist Committee on Relief. And 100% of your donation goes to Hurricane Relief if you donate through UMCOR. You may remember we have special Sundays and we have something called UMCOR Sunday in the spring. And that's where they collect all their money for administrative costs. For the rest of the year, anytime you donate to UMCOR, your donation goes 100% to whatever you're donating to. So if you're interested in donating to Hurricane Relief, you can go directly on UMCOR website. If you're interested in doing that, you can see me after church and I'll direct you in the right, um, in the right path. Uh, if you would like to donate through church, uh, we will make sure that 100% of your donation gets to UMCOR, which then makes sure 100% of your donation gets to Hurricane Relief. Um, all you have to do is make the check out to Asbury and in the memo very clearly write Bahamas Relief and we will make sure it gets there. Okay, uh, Mission Committee is meeting today, so we will be discussing possible other avenues to help and we will keep you posted on that, which brings me to our, my third announcement, third and final. <laughs> um, Mission Committee is meeting today. For the foreseeable future, we will be meeting on the second Sunday after church. Um, we welcome any and all participation. Our meetings are open and we would love to have more people participate. Uh, for those of you on the committee, we will be meeting downstairs in the dining room today, um, about 15 minutes after church. So if you're interested, we'd love to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Morning, Pete. Mission is such a vital part of who we are. And we also have another mission. Lenora, come on, come on down. Our mission is the nursery. We, um, Lenora has um, helped uh, in the nursery for a long time. We now have two folks here um, that are our permanent nursery care workers. Nursery is such a vital part. We all say that we want young people. Well, young people have kids, and we also want to be able to, you know, give a good space for those young kids that can't sit through service. I know some of you also have difficulty sitting through the service, but there is an age limit to our nursery. So I want to introduce you to Ann Street and Ashley Weldon. They are our permanent nursery care workers. We also have three substitutes, which is Allie Forbes, Ashley Grandjean, and Shelly Richardson. They could not be with us today. But these, these folks you probably don't see unless you are a parent of a very young child. And I think it's really important that we see them and for Lenora who does all this coordinating and stuff. So I would invite us to be in a spirit of prayer as we pray for our nursery care workers and for all of our children in general. Let us pray. 
Good and gracious God, we are thankful that you have brought families into Asbury that have children that need care. And we are grateful, God, that you have lifted up folks like Anne and Ashley and Allie and Ashley and Shelley that are willing to take time out to care for these children. God, we ask that your spirit would be upon them each and every day, but especially on Sunday morning, that the, both the children and the parents would feel comfortable, that our um, nursery care workers would, would just give them the love that you have for them in Jesus. Thank you also for Lenora for her hours of work coordinating things when people call in sick and trying to get people to cover um, the nursery. The nursery is a vital part of our ministry. We have so many pieces that form us together. And the nursery is one part. And we are so thankful for it, God, and thank you for these folks. So please, we pray your blessing upon them, on the children, on their families. May they know your love through this ministry. So we give you thanks and praise in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. So folks, let us uh, greet and welcome our nursery workers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You now may go back to work. <laughs> and thank you, Lenora. Thanks. I am now guessing it's joys and concerns. Yes? Okay, thank you. So now we do come to a time in our service. There was a joy but we are going to be sharing God sightings, witnesses to the presence of God in our lives, joys and concerns, a God sighting and a joy. I have the choir with me again. Yay! I get very lonely up there in the summer. It's just me and the organist, and I love my organist and the liturgist. I love them. But man, you know, it's really nice to have them up there. And I'll put a plug in if that's okay, Kathy. If you like to make a, and I'm going to be a little bit flexible, if you like to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, I believe I've read that somewhere, <laughs> and you would love to be able to join them, please see Kathy. They, it is a wonderful ministry because they also bring God's word in a fresh and exciting way. So thank you choir already. I can't wait for this year and um, that is one of my joys. Lindsay. Just a quick thing that uh, for asking for prayers for Dan. He will be having a partial knee replacement this coming Friday down at the VA in Syracuse. If they get in there and discover they've got to do the whole thing, they will, but at the moment it's just a partial. So. Please, we cover your prayers. Okay, prayers for Dan. Um, uh, Helen, all right, Helen Timmerman. Hi. Good morning. My, my, good morning. My cousin Keith's son had a longboarding accident uh, a couple weeks ago. He's still in the hospital and his brain's recovering. And I was just texting Lynn, and she said he's doing a little better each day. His doctor came in yesterday and said, we're still not out of the woods yet, but she wants to try him on a new medication that gives him a little bit more clarity and less agitation. So his brain's really swelling, and his, his skull has been cracked, and he is slowly healing, and he needs prayers. His name is Billy Schaefer. Okay, so continue prayers for Billy. Yes, Olivia. It is my mom and dad's 10th anniversary on Thursday. Aw, happy anniversary. Contrary to what contrary to what Facebook said a few months ago, so okay, happy anniversary. Other joys, concerns, God sightings. Uh, back there, Marie. My youngest son Brian is coming home. I haven't seen him in a year, and from Colorado, and I just want a safe trip for him. Absolutely. Other joys, concerns. Last Thursday, my best friend and I celebrated our 59th wedding anniversary. Yay! Wow. 
A joy for me is that two folks are, uh, who were in the hospital are now out of the hospital. Uh, Glenn and Toby is here. But at least I thought I saw him. Um, so we are thankful that they are on the mend. Um, thankful also for all the school teachers, bus drivers, cafeteria workers. All seems like it has been a pretty good start to the school year. We continue to pray your blessing upon a safe and successful school year for all of our students. Other joys, concerns, prayer requests? This is a joy. Uh, my, our, I should say our son, CJ, is getting married on Saturday. So Lorraine and I will be traveling to Richmond, Virginia for that event. Oh, well, safe travels. And let us continue to keep the folks in the Bahamas um, and everyone that was in the path of uh, Hurricane Dorian. This is probably just the tip as we are into <coughs> hurricane season. Anyone else? Then let us uh, join together in prayer. Good and gracious God, on this Sabbath day, this day you have created, we are thankful to be able to gather as brothers and sisters in Christ. We are thankful for the earth that you have given us and thankful for the beauty of creation. This time of year, God, when leaves are turning and produce is, is um, coming to fruition, it is just so beautiful, the Master's hand in creation. We are grateful for that. And we are thankful, God, that you have, you have ordered Sabbath into our lives. In the Wired Word this morning, God, we talked about why it is important for us to gather. We, we gather together to learn from each other. We gather together to encourage one another, to pray for one another. Because when we step out these doors, we're back into your world that is absolutely beautiful and lovely and at times can be very difficult. And we need that encouragement. We need that uh, building of relationship. We need to hear your word proclaimed again in so many ways. We all learn differently. You created us uniquely, so we learn differently. Some of us can hear your word through the songs that we sing, the things that the choir gives us. Some of us hear your word proclaimed as in the reading of the scripture. Some of us hear your word proclaimed in the words of that you have given the pastor. Some of us hear your words proclaimed as we encourage one another. Brought together, we hear your word in multiple ways that will encourage us as we go out to make those disciples. So be with us, God. Bring your Holy Spirit upon us so that we can hear that which you have for us this day. We have lifted joys and concerns shared and held within the depths of our hearts. We know, God, you are already with folks. We, are, we know that you are with those who are ill, those who are grieving, those who are, will be going through surgery, those who are recovering from surgery. We know that you are with the folks that have been impacted by hurricanes. You are ever-present, God, and we are grateful for that. May we hear your word this day in Psalm 139. May we come to know how well and how much you love and care for your created. So God, for this day, for this time together, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit that continues to move in our lives. We give you thanks. And we give you so much thanks and praise for your Son, our risen, risen Savior, Jesus. And in Jesus' words, we pray to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture is Psalm 139. It is found on page 854 in the back of your hymnal, and we will read it responsively. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you just 
You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it You pursue me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Hither shall I go from your spirit. Or whither shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I, if, if I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you, the night is bright as the day, for darkness is its light with you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for you are fearful and wonderful. Wonderful are your works. You know me very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written the days that were formed for me, every day before they came into being. How profound to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who maliciously defy you, who lift themselves up against you for evil. Do I not hate them that hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe them that rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Please join me in singing from the faith we sing, number 200, or 2,123. Let us join together in prayer. Loving Spirit, you have chosen us to be, and we are grateful for that. 
and we are grateful for this time together. God, may your Holy Spirit continue to work in and through us, clear us of anything that would stop us from hearing what you have for us as individuals and as this community of faith. So God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We humans are a funny lot. We like our privacy, yet we post the most intimate details of our life on social media. How well are you known? And how well do you allow yourself to be known? Humanity is on, all on the spectrum concerning how much we expose ourselves in public. Some say their lives are open books. Read as much or as little as you like. I think of the Kim Kardashians of this life. They crave to have every aspect of their lives available for us not to read. <laughs> Then there are the Greta Garbos of this life. Some of us may remember Greta Garbo. They go to many lengths to be alone. Being known can be a two-edged sword. In a way, the psalmist also declares that God's knowledge of us can be a two-edged sword, depending on your relationship with God. Think about verse 1. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. God knows it all. God knows what we have done. God knows what we have not done. God knows what we think where we go, what we do, what we will say before we even form the words to say it. God goes before us and behind us. There is nothing God does not know about us. There is nowhere we can go without God's presence with us. So is that a good thing? Is that a good thing? Let's nod our heads, yeah. yes. <laughs> because, yes, it is a very good thing. Why is that a good thing? Because that's how much God values us, cares for us, loves us. Now, I am sure there are many things God could do to keep occupied. I bet God's got a checklist bigger than mine. However, the one item God created that God seems the most committed to is us, is humanity. God finds us worthy of God's time. You know, it's not as though God wants to know us as a busybody wants to know someone. We all know busybodies. They're only interested in the juicy secrets or sordid details. But God is just interested in us, period. God only wants the best for us. Our lives are worthy of God's time. Thus, we have worth and value because of God's interest in our lives. How much value? Much more than our current culture seems to value life. How many times have we heard of drive-by shootings, killing innocent people because those driving by don't care who they hit? It's easier to set a bomb off in a marketplace instead of negotiating with the other. The rich get richer while the poor and the dispossessed are out in the street. People use automobiles as weapons to get a point across. 
forever changing the lives of those they hit and their families. However, in God's culture, we are of supreme value and worth. And the remarkable thing, it's not because of anything we've accomplished or anything we have done. It's because God chose to care and create God's most beloved creation, humanity. The psalmist continues, <coughs> I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me, your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. There is not a spot on, under, or above this earth where one can escape from God. Now, we expect God to be in the heavens. And at times, we may even expect God to be on the earth. However, do we expect God to be in the grave? Even the grave, the darkest night, the unimaginable, bleakest, dark night of the soul will not separate us from God. Next, the psalmist praises the creative aspect of God in relation to God's greatest creation, which is us. The psalmist said, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body, knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Almost two years ago, my doctor wasn't sure that my heart was working like it should. So I had an echo stress test. It confirmed two things. One, I have a heart. <laughs> I wish I had taken a picture to give my kids, really. Because they, they think I'm just a heartless mother. Well, I have a heart. It's proven, I have it. And the best part is it's actually working the way it's supposed to work. But the best part of that whole test was the ultrasound of the heart. Now I didn't understand a lot of it, I'm not a doctor, I don't pretend to be, but I did understand the picture of my heart on the screen doing that which it was designed to do so many years ago. My valve opened and closed rhythmically. Blood flowed back and forth in living colors of red and blue. I couldn't keep my eyes, not green, Paul, no, there was no green blood, no red and blue, not red and green. I couldn't keep my eyes away from the screen. This incredible complex pump, the size of my fist, that weighs between 12 and 16 ounces, pushes blood through my body to provide oxygen and nutrients while removing metabolic waste at the same time. It's placed in my chest cavity with ribs surrounding it for protection, just like the original design called for. And watching my heart on the ultrasound made me think about the complexities and the intricacies of the entire human body. Who could make something so elaborate, so multifaceted, yet something that works together for the good of the created? The only conclusion I could come up with was God. 
And why would God do this? God did this because we are persons of interest to God, beloved, of sacred worth. And since we are of such value, it follows that the one who takes so much time to make something so intricate and so complex will never turn their back on their beloved creation. Hence, nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ. You know, we humans are always trying to find our place in this world. Who am I is a cry we have all cried at one time or another. The, te the teenager cries, who am I, as they try to maneuver those difficult adolescent years. The newly divorced cries, who am I, aside from being part of a couple. The widow or the widower cries, who am I without the love of my life by their side? The unemployed and the retiree cries, who am I, when their worth, defined by their job, now has nowhere to go when they wake up? Who am I? I am your created masterpiece, loved by you, nurtured by you, cared by you. You are always with me in good times and bad, through joys and sorrows, in hospital beds, nursing home dining rooms, college dorms, office cubicles, and at a graveside. You, God, are always there. And who am I? I am worth your time because that's how much you love me. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And I wake, when I wake up, you are still with me. Have you ever thought about the fact that God thinks about you? I think about God. However, sometimes I don't think about the fact God actually thinks about me. After all, God has so many people on earth, earth for which to care. However, you see, that's the beauty of God. No matter how many people, how many situations, how many hot spots in the world, how many crises, God thinks about all of us. Furthermore, those thoughts are not, well, there she goes again. When will she ever learn? God's thoughts of us are precious. Precious as invaluable, costly, dear, and priceless. We are treasures in God's thoughts and in God's sight. Moreover, if we are precious in God's thoughts and in God's sights, we can conclude everyone God created is precious in God's thoughts and in God's sight. All means all, the rich as well as the poor, the able as well as the disabled, the Christian as well as the Jew, the Muslim, the Buddhist, the agnostic, and the atheist, the American, as well as the Palestinian, the Iraqi, the African, the North Korean, the poor, as well as the middle class, the rich, those on public assistance, the apartment dweller, as well as those living on the streets, in cars, and homeowners. God's love extends to all. And if God's all means all, so should we. At the end of the psalm, we come to know why the psalmist wrote about God's intimate knowledge of us. He wrote, search me, O God, and know my heart. 
Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. The psalmist knows in order to have a right relationship with God, with the God that knows us so well inside and out, we need to be honest enough with God to say, not only point out the bad stuff, but help me get rid of the mess so I can enjoy the life you desire for me. In other words, the psalmist is willing to undergo both a spiritual CAT scan and MRI to be able to diagnose what is lurking inside. Then the psalmist chooses to adopt corrective measures to eradicate that which is counter to what God desires. Why is the psalmist willing to undergo this depth of investigation? Throughout these verses, the psalmist understands how God is loving and trustworthy. The psalmist can trust this God who knows him inside and out, who is always present, and who does not leave even when poor decisions trump over good. Thus the psalmist is eager to please the one who loves him from before time began throughout eternity. When the psalmist places his life in God's hands, a peace that defies any and all circumstances fills his heart and his mind and his soul. Known and loved by God, what more could we ever want? Let us pray. Oh God, you know us. You know us better than we know ourselves. And in spite of everything, you love us and you desire that relationship with us. So search us, God. Know our thoughts. Test us. Correct us so that we can walk in the way of everlasting. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. So friends, we do come to a time in our service where we do first present ourselves to God and then we present our tithes and our gifts for our morning offering.
please join me in the prayer of dedication that's printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Some bear crosses hollowed out by hunger. Some carry crosses called injustice. Sometimes our abundance is a cross which we struggle to bear. Nevertheless, as we learn to follow you, as we seek to be as generous as you, we discover that we can gift others with hope, with grace, and with peace. Receive our offerings this day so they might bless your children in every way imaginable. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our final hymn is number 664. Please join me in the sending forth that's printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> it is God who has formed us as a community of faith. It is Jesus who has knit us together as partners in grace. It is the Spirit who gives us the words we need. Now we will go to speak for justice and hope for all. Amen.
This has been a broadcast of the 1015 service Sunday morning from Asbury United Methodist Church located on Franklin Street in Watertown. Asbury United Methodist Church.